Welcome again to the Sunday Guerrilla Men's Bible Study. I'm Brother Thomas Lee Harris III, and we are continuing in our Bible study that we have entitled, entitled Bored to Death, Get Busy for Life. And in this segment, I want to go even deeper into the second part of our title, Get Busy for Life. We, I want to look into life, and I got some, some props just so I could bring clarity to the subject about this thing called life. Um, in, the, in the book of John, remember in... in the book of John, the Gospel of John 10.10, 10, 10, 10 reads, The thief does not come but to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Okay, the thief, we're, we're talking about the adversary, the spirit that is against us, the devil. Jesus is saying that the devil, his plan for us, ultimate d demise, is death. The devil's plan is ultimate demise and death. Jesus' plan is life and life more abundantly. I want to jump into some, another uh, clarity scripture in the, the book of, um, of Luke. Okay? Luke 15, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. And it's a story about a son leaving his father for a while. And then after blowing his, his inheritance, the money that his, his father had gave him, he has to return home, right? And it, the story is called The Prodigal Son. You may have heard of it, about it. And it, it's, actually, it, it's a parable. It's an explanation about the way we throw away our lives. And then when we turn back to God, he, with open arms, he welcomes him, us home. But the last verse in Luke chapter 15, it reads, it's a conversation about the man welcoming, welcoming his son back home and with, in the, the conversation is with the other son who had been home with him all the time. Okay, and verse 32 in Luke 15 says, It was right that we should be merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. And I, I make clarity on this scripture. I bring this to bring clarity to our subject in that in the Gospel of John, when Jesus says, I bring you life and life more abundantly, you see how the scripture uses the word in Luke 15? He says, the son that was lost was dead, even though he wasn't dead. But the lifestyle away from the father is considered walking like a dead man walking. And that's how we have to see it. When we come to this gospel and want to become obedient to God, we must recognize that the life that we had been living before, we were dead man walking. So Jesus says, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Now the duality of abundance is he's coming to give us eternal life. Right? Eternal life, which is forever, in life right now. So when he says life, that means life right now because prior to coming to the scripture, we were like that prodigal son. We weren't technically dead, but the father referred to him as our, 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 our family member was lost. He was dead. But now he's alive. So that life of getting busy for life is let's get busy with life and the abundance to take care of the self when we get there now I want to see I want to make like a comparison in, in that okay God I've accepted you in my life right imagine that Sunday or wherever you were when you made that decision I, I confess let's go, let's go to Romans we're going to work hard in this one we could probably go over 10 Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Okay? And chapter 10 is where, chap, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So that's the scripture here everybody say. Confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart, you'll be saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. 
Okay? So that's the heart and the mouth. Verse 11. Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Verse 12 reads, But there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Okay, we're going to go deeper into rich. Verse 13. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? All right, verse 14 is important. Listen. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? All right, so what it's saying here now is the day I got, the day before I, I, I said this prayer, God, I want you into my heart, they're asking the question, well, how does a person do this? You know, how can I just say that and just yesterday I didn't believe? How does it work? And we, and we need this to see what this getting busy for life is. And verse 14 continues, and who shall they believe in whom of whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings. Verse 16 reads, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? And verse 17 is the key. It says, so then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So the mo what happens after I, I, I say this prayer, the moment where I said, God, I want Jesus to be the head of my life. I, 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 I'm confessing with my mouth. I'm believing in your heart. Do you know, at the moment you leave, get up off your knees or leave the church after you made that confession, that you have the ability to still go and do the same wild stuff you've been doing? That is not a hocus pocus type of God where the moment you made that confession, he goes boop, boop, and then you, you, you can't do wrong anymore? It doesn't work like that. This getting busy for life requires my participation. And that's why I have this, this box of pennies up here, right? You know, some people got the big jar. This is my little big jar. I got a bigger jar. And what I'm doing is, I'm one of those guys who, you know, I collect a penny. If I'm out during the day, you know, put it in. Put it in. Put it in. That process, that a process of accumulating the wealth that I want, takes a while. Right? It, it, it takes, it takes time, but it takes me being diligent in my process right I can't just sit back and then 360 days later it's full while I'm out doing other things I have to be gathering and then at the end of the day you know I get the pennies I collect in my pocket and do that or some people whenever they go to the store they, they whatever change they don't spend their change right they don't put the change in the vending machine they throw in at the end of the day, right? And after a period of time, according to the diligence of my, oh, there's a penny on the floor, that, you know, throughout the day, it will fill up. But what I don't do, say I find a penny on the floor, I don't run home just to put it in, in there. Because that's messing up my money. And what I'm showing is, that's how you accumulate wealth. And that's how, when Jesus talks about this abundance of life, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This belief in Jesus, the moment I, I, I say that Jesus, I believe in you, God, I trust and believe in your word. Right? Now I have to accumulate the wealth. Okay? Now imagine this. Imagine this. See, mine's not all the way filled up. Imagine this penny jar is all the way filled up. This is me. The word of God is full. It says I... I come to give you life. So remember, the life that I was living prior to coming to the knowledge of this, 
I was dead, dead man walking. I come to the knowledge of the word and I begin to walk in obedience. Now I'm alive. Okay? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So the more that I study this, Okay? The more that, you see, God's already full. And the only difference here that I can't show in this analogy, when I draw from God, He's still full. But watch this. This is what we have the ability to do as a human being. I'm studying, I'm studying, all right? I'm manifesting the fruits of the Spirit, right? I'm being loving, caring, long suffering. Right? Um, I'm being patient, diligent with the word. But remember, just like when I confess this prayer of salvation, at any time, in any day, at any hour, in any minute, I can do this. I can take what God gave me and give it back. I can take a day off just to curse somebody out. Right? I didn't help that person. I didn't help myself. I still have salvation. But I'm throwing my abundance, my physical manifested abundance on this earth, back into the bucket. More work. More diligence. More diligence. More long suffering, more patience, more love, more that Jesus joy. Right? Here's a big one. More self control. Alright? But every time I ch choose to be a hater, every time I choose to have an outburst of wrath, Every time I choose to be not faithful to a spouse, every time I choose to fornicate, every time I choose to be drunk and not sober, then I wake up the next morning. <sighs> you see? You see? <laughs> and it's the same thing in, in this accumul accumulation of my pennies. Look, it's not full yet. I could do this. Well, I needed some change to go put in the, in the vending machine. And the thing ain't full yet. You understand? I'm not, I'm not maximizing. I'm not taking advantage. Trust in the process of accumulating my wealth where I can reap the ultimate reward. Waiting for that thing to fill up is like a long suffering. Right? That patience, it's like patience, everything, long suffering, everything going together. Right? Even me, when I'm finding pennies and throwing in, that's part of the long suffering because the reward is promised. Okay? So I, I hope we got to look at abundance today and how we, God's not, it's not going to be like this. God is always full. We trying to get ours full. Unfortunately for us, we don't get full overnight. He don't just deposit everything because he requires us to go in just like we out looking for pennies. He requires us to, to go in here and study it. And also, not just a hearer and a reader of the word, we have to go out and do it. So say I just loved, read about love, and then I went out all day being a hater, or being evil to people. Look, that's no deposit. That's like a halfway deposit. I read about it, but I was cursing all day. I gave it back. Okay? I hope we got something out of that. And uh, God bless you.